You're very excited to reveal Oprah's newest book club selection only on CBS Mornings. This has never happened to us before, to reveal it without Oprah. It's called Channeling My Inner Oprah Familiaris! <laughs> that was good. Wow. <laughs> Did you warm up your voice for that? <laughs> Familiaris! <laughs> That's how she would save it, David Robleski, if she was here. It's a bad imitation, I know. But Oprah says this, quote, David takes us on an extraordinary journey that brilliantly interweaves history, philosophy, adventure, and mysticism to explore the meaning of love, friendship, and living your life's true purpose. Familiaris! That will be the last time I'll do it. Is a prequel to the New York Times bestselling novel, The Story of Edgar Sautel. Book club fans may remember that Oprah selected it as one of her picks back in 2008. That's how long she's been singing the praises of David Obleski's. His new book follows Edgar Sattel's grandfather, John Sattel, and his new wife, Mary, as they start a life together with their friends and dogs in the north woods, woods of Wisconsin. David, we're very happy to say joins us right now in studio. I'm so glad you are here. You were first selected back in 2008. Yeah. You get a phone call yeah. for Edgar Sattel. Yeah. So what was the difference between then and then now? I think I, I, I expected it even less now than I did. Then I was, I was uh, floored back in 2008, um, and um, uh, I was just completely dumbfounded at, at this point because I, don't, I just didn't expect uh, this to happen twice. Mm. It's, uh, what, a, what a privilege. It's like hitting the lottery twice. Yeah, uh, yeah, or being struck by lightning. lightning. <laughs> the best kind of lightning, the best yes. Kind of lightning. But she loved, she loved Edgar's story so much, and now you've gone back, you've done a prequel, which was surprising to her. Yes. Was there something about the Sawtell family that you just could not let go? Because hmm. it took you 15 years? It, it took me 15 years. I'm a slow writer. But um, <laughs> uh, what happened was, while I was writing Edgar, this character of Edgar's grandfather kept showing up in the book. And wanting to play a bigger role than he than he deserved to play in that book, so it, it, this happens in writing where you have to say, "Yeah, that's interesting," but I'm gonna I have to set that aside mm. uh, because it's not good for the book itself. Yeah. Uh, but that kept happening, and, and I finally said, it, "When I finish Edgar, if John is still interesting, then he gets his own book." That's and he was he was um, I, I was completely taken with him, partly because the way he's introduced in, uh, in Edgar is having been born with an extra share of whimsy. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. like that. And, and there was yeah. a part of me that wanted to know, what, what did I mean by that? Explore by, by writing that. Because you, what did you, you mean write, by that? Yeah. But you're the one that wrote it. Well, <laughs> uh, at the time, it was meant to be, um, you know, a, 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 a flash bulb or, a, you know, instantaneous oh. portrait of who he was. Got it. Um, so that people would have a sense of, uh, uh, his uh, his personality, but, the, but I so, felt like that there was a there was just so much behind that. Yeah, it's always so interesting hearing writers talk about how characters kind of walk into the scene, even if you don't intend to have them there. Yes. And this yes. is what happened in this case, it sounds like. But yes. you also drew on some of your own experiences growing up on a farm in yes. Wisconsin yes. to write this book. How, how did what you went through as a kid become something in this work of fiction? Well, it, in part, uh, when I wrote uh, Edgar, what I, what I decided to do is take our family farm and evacuate all the real people and put in all new people mm. to play out a story that I so had in mind. So I, I used our farm as a setting, uh, but also relocated it north by about 100 miles and, and sort of exaggerated its qualities. So yeah. but, the, but the barn in this uh, story and the barn in the, uh, in the first, uh, in, in Edgar, are this... It's that's the barn I remember crawling around with in and as a little kid and oh, playing sweet. in. Yeah. Um, and the house is a variant of the house that I grew up in. And you say this book is focused on five quests. Is that you? Is that you? Is that, that that's you right there? That, that is me. Whoa. Little David. Aww. Yeah. Um, wow. You say this book is based on um, is focused on five quests. Um, kind of unpack that for us. Sure. Um, I wanted to tell John's entire life story, and I knew it was going to cover. 40 some years. Uh, so uh, I didn't want to try and do that just chronologically. And I decided to divide his life up into what I called the five great quests that his life goes through. Because to me, it, it seems like that's the way life works. I love that. You, yeah. you, you say, not, suppose not, you could do one impossible thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's sort of his key phrase that he says to his friends because he tries to convince his friends to come with him on this, the first of these five quests. 
um, to go to this farm. But, but, but it's also the, the stories about dogs, which also resonates with Oprah. You know, farms, dogs, people, ordinary people doing extraordinary things, yes. living their life yeah. and seeing how their life turns out together. But the thing that struck me is about the love story, mm -hmm. because at the heart of everything is a love story. And Oprah and I went back and forth because the title Famili Familiaris, I said it was Latin for family. She said it has to do with canines. What, what is it? Oh, you're it? both right. We're both right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the... No, you mean, Gail, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but go ahead. You're, We're both right. <laughs> you're both right. You're a little writer. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it is the it is from the Latin binomial for dog canis familiaris, but also the reason why I liked it as a title is there's the word family is embedded in there, yes, um, and familiars people you know who are close, and the and the and the root of the word family is people around the house. The other thing that we went back and had, I'm not saying argue, but we had a discussion about the dogs. What do the dogs look like? Because in my mind, I see a dog with long ears. Not quite a beagle type, but a lab type. She sees like a German shepherd type. What does a sawtail dog look like to you? Yeah, I'm not going to tell you that. And why? Here's why. Um, I, I, there's a certain division of labor uh, that I tried to put in Edgar and I tried to carry through here that I want readers to be able to imagine mm. uh, how the dogs version. look themselves. Mm. Allow them to okay. paint the picture. And, and one of the really fun things okay. about talking to people after Edgar came out is people would come along and say, uh, my dog is definitely a sawtail yes. dog. You know, it's a chihuahua oh, or, you know, <laughs> or David, a mastiff or whatever. Nicely done. Yeah, nicely thanks. done. Bravo, bravo. Yes. Oprah thanks you. We all thank you. Familiaris is on sale now. Check out CBSMornings.com for a reader's guide.